Well, hi guys, it's Alyssa, and I am here with another reading for you all today. So we are gonna be talking about what you are manifesting. This is not going to be strictly like relationship focused. Y'all have probably figured out by now that I really like doing love and relationship readings. It's kind of my bread and butter on this channel, but I wanted to do something a bit different today um, because I know not everybody wants to see love readings all the time. So yeah, what are you manifesting? What are you attracting into your life right now? So I have three decks of cards here for you guys to choose from. Deck number one is the Everyday Witch Tarot. Deck number two is the Sasha Fenton Tarot. And deck number three is the Light Seers Tarot. Okay, so I will give you guys a moment to make your choices. You can pause the video if you need to, take a minute to meditate. As usual, all of my links are in the description below, so if you want to check those out, you can. I do offer personal readings if that's something that you may be interested in. You can go to my Etsy store and find out more about that. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into this. Um, deck number one, those of you who chose the Everyday Witch Tarot, let's find out what you guys are manifesting. chariot and the star coming out right away. Seven of cups. Five of swords, queen of wands. King of pentacles. Two of swords. Let me get one more. And the three of wands. Awesome. Okay, on the bottom of the deck here, we have the Devil card. I will set that off to the side for right now. Okay, so um, give me a second, guys, to look over these cards. In general, um, well, hang on. Give me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me see here. <clears throat> So, okay, um, I'm going to go through all of these cards like individually and just kind of talk about like what they mean. Um, I know a lot of people like when I do that. Um, so first of all, we have the chariot here. This card is really a card of choice. It's also a card of ambition and willpower and drive. To me, this is, you know, definitely a very action oriented card. It really talks a lot about forward movement. And um, it also speaks to me of like facing adversity, okay? Um, <clears throat> the star, this is a very optimistic kind of energy. It really talks about like hope for the future. It also is associated with healing and renewal and restoration. And there's just this real strong sense of optimism and peace. And I also get a sense of like serenity with this card. And in some cases, it, it definitely can represent uh, wish fulfillment or be associated with wish fulfillment or, you know, the manifestation of one's desires. Um, the Seven of Cups is here as well. This is kind of interesting because this card is a little bit similar to the star in some ways. Um, this talks to me a lot about having options. Um, it shows up a lot in situations where somebody has a lot of options available to them or they have a choice to make, but they're not really sure what they should choose. Like, what's the best path for me to take in this situation? Or what's the best way for me to move forward here? Um, 
It can also represent like somebody having a lot of dreams and a lot of ambitions, but maybe feeling a little bit confused or a little bit overwhelmed as far as like how to actually achieve them or, you know, reach those particular goals. Um, we also have here the Five of Swords, which this is also uh, kind of an interesting energy here because the Five of Swords talks to me a lot about defeat and disappointment. Um, it can also represent like a victory, but a hollow sort of victory, like getting something that you thought you wanted, but it doesn't feel as good as you thought it would, or it just doesn't turn out the way that you expected it to. You know what I'm saying? Um, something just being kind of a letdown in the end. Uh, the Queen of Wands is here as well. Again, this is a card that talks a lot about manifestation in many cases. The Queen of Wands is a very powerful, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I, you know, I, I get a lot of like creative energy from the Queen of Wands. She's very self-confident. She's very self-empowered. You know, she's the kind of person who knows what she wants and she knows how to get it and she's going to do whatever she needs to do in order to, you know, achieve her goals. Um, a very, very driven figure, okay? Um, the King of Pentacles, this is stability and security. The King of Pentacles really talks about like abundance and prosperity and being in a state where you just feel like, you know, all of your needs, especially your like more material needs, the more tangible aspects of your life are really being fulfilled and satisfied. Um, so, you know, pentacles correspond to the earth element. Earth energy relates a lot to money, work, uh, living situations, the home, that sort of thing. So that's generally what these cards talk about. Um, and like I said, this, this really is indicative of like a sense of security in the more material matters of life. And it can definitely indicate like success in one's career, um, you know, being able to really provide for oneself as well as, you know, your family or loved ones. The Two of Swords is a card of indecision and uncertainty. A lot of times this represents like kind of being locked in a stalemate, like being really torn about like a, a certain decision or not wanting to make a decision about something for whatever reason. Uh, so, you know, it's a very stagnant kind of energy. It's like a, an energy of delays, feeling stuck. And then lastly is the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is one of my favorite cards because it talks to me about opportunity and like limitless potential. Uh, it's kind of like the anything is possible card, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's really about broadening one's horizons and exploration and embracing the unknown. It's about potential for change, potential for action. Um, so with all of that said, group number one, um, First of all, I'm feeling like many of you who chose this group are definitely very like ambitious individuals. I'm I'm getting a real like strong uh drive from you guys and like like you guys have so many goals and so many dreams and I feel like for some of you, you know, maybe in your lives people have told you that, you know, uh some of the things that you want to do in your life or some of the things that you want to achieve are not totally feasible. You know, I feel like some of you have maybe had people tell you that, you know, some of your dreams you're, you're not going to be able to achieve for whatever reason, like, like you're overly ambitious or something like that. Um, and I feel like many of you have kind of taken that to heart to an extent. <clears throat> you know, based on what I'm seeing here, I get the impression that um, some of you guys in, in the past have maybe listened 
to these doubts that have been planted in your minds and and listened to the people that told you that you know you're not going to be able to achieve all the things that you want because your ambitions are too broad they're too big and grand and you know it's just not realistic some of the things that you want to do um so yeah I, I feel like some of you have had a lot of doubt in yourselves and in your ability to accomplish the things that you want in your life because of you know things that people have said to you um and it's really easy to become doubtful and uncertain when you know people around you or or, or when the world is telling you that you know it's it's just not feasible it's just not realistic uh, what you want and so for that reason I'm seeing that some of you have perhaps tried to take different paths in your lives you know I see that some of you have like um, maybe maybe said well okay let me try to do something different let me pursue a different career path or you know let me um, let me study something else in in school something that will be easier for me to utilize, you know, in, in, in make into a career. Um, you know, I, I feel like some of you have chosen to take a more, I want to say like socially acceptable or more like typical path in terms of your careers or you know how you're living your lives like for example um maybe you wanted to be an actor or an author and make a living like writing books or you know something like that um because because i i really get the sense that many of you who chose this group are very creative people um but I feel like a lot of you have perhaps, you know, aban abandoned some of those ambitions and some of those dreams that you had and instead chosen to, you know, work in like a, a corporate kind of setting or maybe you've ended up in retail or, you know, something just something that just really isn't fulfilling you and really isn't like really doesn't align at all with what you wanted for yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and going back to the devil card that was on the bottom of the deck, this is making a lot of sense to me now. Um, I feel like this is representing those doubts and naysayers that you've, you've probably had to deal with in your lives. Um, because the devil, you know, this card can really represent anything that might cause a person to feel trapped or stuck in some way. It certainly can represent doubts. It certainly can represent insecurities. Um anxiety, depression, that sort of thing as well. So I feel like because many of you have tried to take different paths in your lives and, and you've kind of walked away or, or turned your back on certain goals that you had for yourselves, you know, as a result of that, you have felt very stagnant in your life. Like, like you felt like you're just not being fulfilled. You're not feeling totally satisfied. Um, like there's something kind of missing, you know? Um, you, uh, take, using the career example again, um, maybe you wanted to be an author and make a living writing things, but you were, you've, you've decided to take a different career path and now you work like in an office somewhere. Um, maybe you're like an accountant or something. And while you may be making good money and you may be able to provide well for yourself and your loved ones and you know, all of that, you have a stable career, you have a stable life. It just feels like something's missing because you're not being fulfilled by the work that you're doing. You're not being fulfilled by what you're doing with your day-to-day -day life. You know, it just feels empty. It feels meaningless to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I get the impression that that may be where a lot of you guys are at right now. Okay. Um, but it seems to me like you are on the brink of experiencing a pretty significant shift, okay? 
um, like, I'm, I'm seeing you guys kind of reaching a breaking point, kind of reaching the point where you're saying enough is enough. You know, I feel like I've wasted enough of my time, enough of my life doing things that I don't really care about, doing things that don't really fill me up. And, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, you know, maybe now that you've gotten older or now that you've had more life experience, you know, whatever, I feel like a lot of you guys are, you either have made this decision or you're trying, you're in the process of making this decision to go back to some of the things that you originally wanted to do. Does that make sense? Um, so, you know, you, you may be thinking seriously right now about pursuing some of those dreams that you once had that you gave up on or abandoned or whatever and i feel like many of you are probably kind of intimidated by this because it's like you know you, you know you you may be feeling like you know, at this point in my life, do I really want to give up the career that I've built for myself? Or do I really want to, you know, totally change things around like this? Um, because I, I feel like a lot of you will have to make some sort of sacrifice uh, in order to actually start pursuing what it is that you truly want. Um, so there may be a little bit of like instability or uncertainty that arises because of that, but I feel like, I feel like you guys just kind of have to be brave and like stick it out because in the end, I feel that you guys will ultimately be successful in, in, in manifesting, you know, whatever it is that you always wanted to do. Okay. Does, does this make sense? And I know I've been using like the career situation a lot as an example. I do feel for some of you, this could be uh, referring to like a relationship. Like some of you maybe uh, chose to settle for a relationship that is, you know, it's okay, but it kind of feels like something is lacking. You know, it's like this person maybe has been a, a decent partner and, you know, you get along, but there's something kind of missing. It's like the two of you aren't totally in alignment with each other. Um, but maybe you felt like, you know, this is this is the best I'm going to be able to do. I should just, you know, I, I should just grab onto this person while I can because they will help me to have a stable life, a happy life, a comfortable life, whatever. Um, you know, and I, I don't want to be alone. Maybe, you know, maybe something like that happened for you. Um, so, you know, just basically what I'm saying is that this doesn't strictly have to be, you know, about like a career situation or something pertaining to that. Um, if this is a relationship that this is talking about, again, it, it can be very intimidating. Like the idea of giving up something that feels safe and something that feels comfortable, <sighs> But I feel like, you know, I feel like whatever it is that you've been investing all of this time and energy into, I feel like it's, it's draining you a lot more than you may realize. And I feel like you're not going to realize just how much this situation or this thing has been draining you until you detach yourself from it. Does that make sense? Because putting your time and energy into something that is unfulfilling, that is dissatisfying, it can really, it can really take a toll on you, you know? Um, mental health wise, you know, as far as your emotions go. But yeah, basically what I'm seeing for you guys, group one, is this big shift that you guys are manifesting. This, this, this transition from you know, the old, the mundane, the unfulfilling towards something, something more exciting, something that's going to make you feel opt more optimistic about your life and something that's going to be more in alignment with what you, you know, are truly passionate about and what you truly want for yourself. 
Okay, does that make sense? Um, I think at this point, it's really just a matter of sticking to it, you know, being brave and like taking that leap, taking that risk in walking away from whatever it is that you've been doing um, or been investing in. But I feel like you, many of you are going to have to take that risk in order to get what it is that you really want for yourself in order to get something that's really going to be in alignment with you and, and make you feel truly, truly satisfied. Okay, so it's just like I said, it's just a matter of being brave and being willing to take that risk. Um, and I feel like many of you guys are kind of building yourselves up to that, okay? Making that big change, making that big sacrifice or whatever. Um, so, you know, keep, keep building yourselves up, okay? Because whatever it is that you really, really want, you can have it. You can manifest something better. You can manifest something that more accurately aligns with your real goals and ambitions for yourself. You can do that, okay? It's just gonna take some effort and it's gonna take some courage. And like I said, it's there's gonna be a sacrifice that's gonna have to be made here, but I feel like many of you are already aware of that and it's just a matter of working yourselves up to actually taking that leap, okay? So, um, group number one, I think I'm going to leave that there. That's what I'm getting for you guys, what you are manifesting right now. So I hope that this was interesting. I hope that this resonated with you guys and I hope you enjoyed. I really appreciate you guys joining me today. I hope I see you next time. Bye. Okay, so those of you who chose the Sasha Fenton Tarot, let's find out what you guys are manifesting right now. Whoa, okay, that's, that's way too many cards. Let's see. What is group two manifesting? Okay, we have the Ten of Swords. All right. Interesting way to start this reading off. is a few too many cards. I think I am going to take this one though. Seven of Swords. It was it came it was kind of separate from the others. Um <clears throat> Ten of Swords and Seven of Swords. Okay, let's see what's going on here. The Ten of Cups and the World. Okay. Two of Pentacles. Six of Cups. What do we have here? The Wheel of Fortune, the Tower. And on the bottom of the deck here, we have the Hanged Man. Okay, so let me start by just going through these cards individually and talking a little bit about what they mean. I know a lot of people like uh, when I do that. So um, first card that we have here, Ten of Swords. This is a pretty heavy energy. Um, this card typically represents grief, loss, heartache. It can definitely indicate some kind of betrayal. In general, this really just talks to us about like some kind of painful, difficult ending, okay? Tens generally relate to endings or release. 
in in some way um the seven of swords this is associated with like deception or dishonesty it can also signify some sort of betrayal happening um in general though there's just this sense of like avoidance that I tend to get with this card it can represent like some kind of sneaky sort of energy going on sneaky behavior or it can represent like someone trying to avoid something or avoid some kind of confrontation or avoid taking um avoid facing something which is interesting um okay okay the ten of cups here this card is about emotional fulfillment and satisfaction this card talks to us about loving happy relationships wish fulfillment this is like unconditional love and, and joy and you know especially in terms of one's emotional state or or one's like relationships this just signifies a lot of happiness and a lot of contentment um the world similar in in some ways to the ten of cups this also signifies wholeness and completion and you know fulfillment um you know this is a very like all-encompassing kind of energy and it can definitely represent cycles endings and new beginnings the two of pentacles here this usually signifies like some kind of indecision or uncertainty some sort of in and out back and forth kind of energy going on uh, sometimes it represents like somebody going back and forth on something like having trouble making a decision about something um, the six of cups here this card is really associated with like the past uh, memories nostalgia especially like childhood okay um, the ten uh, sorry the wheel of fortune which is number ten um, this is kind of similar to the world in the sense that, again, this is also associated with cycles, endings, new beginnings. It's also a card of change and transition. Um, and then lastly, the tower. This is a pretty intense card. Um, the tower usually is about some kind of sudden, unexpected change happening, something that really just shakes you to your core. Um, it can represent things like really not going according to plan like like a situation just totally going off the rails or something happening that just kind of breaks you down and forces you to like pick up the pieces and rebuild in a pretty significant way and then over here on the bottom of the deck we have the, the hanged man like i said this card can represent like stagnation or delays waiting periods um, it can also be about sacrifice as well as illumination, like like gaining new perspectives on something. Uh, so in some some ways, um, I, I sometimes see the hanged man as being about like self reflection, or you know, it's it, it can be a very introspective kind of energy too. So, with all of that said. Um, the gist of what I'm seeing here, group two, I feel like this message has to do a lot with your, I want to say, like your relationships with yourselves, if that makes sense. Um, I feel as though a lot of you who chose this group maybe have experienced some significant traumas in your lives. Um, particularly going back to childhood, I feel like a lot of you have been carrying old wounds around with you, like old negative energies. Um, you, you have deep core wounds that, that haven't been healed, that maybe you haven't been able to heal because you haven't allowed yourselves to really dwell on what happened to you, um, or, or something like that. Um... I get the sense that, you know, obviously, um, with this just being a general reading, this 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 traumatic thing or this tower energy could could be representing like a lot of things. You know, it could be a childhood trauma, it could be abuse, it could be some some kind of big betrayal that you experienced or a very uh, painful loss of some kind you know 
take it how it resonates, take it how it, how it feels like it applies to you. Um, but I feel like whatever this thing was, whatever this traumatic event was that you experienced, I feel like since that happened, it has caused you a lot of difficulty in your life because I feel like in a lot of ways you haven't really allowed yourself to face it. I feel like you have avoided that thing. I feel like you have avoided facing or addressing the ways that that event or that experience affected you. Okay, is this making sense? Um, I feel like you guys were really struck off balance in, in many ways. Um, and, and you maybe have had a hard time like maintaining a sense of stability or security in your lives because of whatever this thing was that occurred. Um, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like group two, you, I feel like you've experienced a lot of pain and a lot of suffering in your life. And, you know, everyone does, obviously, uh, at some point. But for you guys, it feels like, it feels like the pain that you've experienced it goes very deep. It's very deep. It's very cutting. It's, it, it like, like, like you've been wounded, like down to your core, down to your soul. And it's really impacted, like your ability to, I, I, I feel for some of you, it has affected your ability to like maintain healthy functional relationships it's maybe affected your ability to hold down jobs um it's i feel like it's certainly affected like your mental health and emotional well-being you know um and i think that for the majority of you who chose this group you've kind of come to realize what's been going on like like you've come to realize or or you've noticed maybe some of the patterns that you've been replaying in your life and you've figured out you know the root of those issues um and you've traced you know you, you've traced it back to whatever this was whatever this event or experience was that happened um so You've done that work. I, I feel like group two, you guys have been doing a lot of shadow work. Like you've been investing a lot of time and a lot of energy into, you know, doing some really uncomfortable stuff. Uh, shadow work is basically like, you know, facing the aspects of ourselves that we would prefer to ignore. Um, you know, addressing our trauma and trying working to heal our deepest innermost wounds that we have um and you know it's 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 intimidating it's an extremely painful extremely uncomfortable process but it's really necessary in order for us to grow as human beings and in order for us to you know make progress along our journeys as spiritual beings right <sighs> And I feel that many of you have, like I said, I feel that many of you have been putting a lot of effort into uh, facing these things and working on yourselves in this way. And I'm very proud of you for that, okay? It's not easy at all. You have been working towards starting a new cycle in your lives. You you want to be able to feel happiness, true happiness and true contentment and true satisfaction in your life. You want to be able to have healthy 
functional, loving relationships with other people. You want to be able to be vulnerable with your loved ones. You want to be able to have deep, you know, emotional connections with your loved ones. And, you know, you want to be able to have a steady, solid, uh, grounded, stable life. Just in general, I feel that. I feel like that's what you guys are really craving. And you've figured out, you know, what you need to do in order to get to that point where you can have those things and you can maintain those things for yourselves. Um, it's And at this point, it's really just a matter of sticking to it and continuing to do that inner work, which is so difficult and it can be so painful. Um, but I feel like group two, that's what you're manifesting. Like you are manifesting a new beginning. You are manifesting a whole new cycle, a whole new chapter of your lives, a healthier chapter, a happier chapter. Um, as long as you continue to do this work that you have been doing. For, for, for a small number of you, I feel like maybe you haven't exactly begun this work yet. Maybe you've been thinking about it. Maybe you've been trying to figure out like what it is that you need to do. Um, but the, it, it, the point still stands, you know. Um, this journey that you are on you know, for some of you, you've made a lot of progress on this journey already. For others of you, you maybe haven't even quite stepped onto this path just yet. But regardless of where you're at, this this journey is going to be so worth it in the end. Because I do see you guys manifesting that stability and that satisfaction, that, you know, emotional security and comfort that you've really been craving. Um... Like, I, I feel, as an example, I, f I feel like for some of you, in the end, at the end of this, your relationships with people in your life are going to become so much better and so much more secure and so much more satisfying for both of you. You know, um, like, romantic relationships, you know, if, if you're in any kind of, like, long-term partnership or anything like that, I feel like this work really could have a big impact on improving that that type of relationship relationships with family with friends um and and also improving your relationship with yourselves you know i see you guys ultimately being able to manifest love for yourself and and greater love for your fellow human beings um you're manifesting peace you're manifesting peace and you're manifesting comfort and serenity. And I think, you know, that might not sound super exciting, but I feel like, you know, that's, that's what most of us just really want at the end of the day. That's what most people really crave. And that's, that's, I think that's what's really important in life. So yeah, group two, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing this work. I know it's not easy, trust me, um, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Because this work is going to open up so many doors for you. Deepening your relationships with other people, you know, giving you, giving you a greater appreciation and love for yourself. Um, it's going to allow you to have the, the, the focus and the, the peace of mind and, and the motivation that you need in order to, you know, achieve, um, goals that you might have, you know, in your life related to work or anything, anything really. So yeah, group two that's what I'm getting for you guys. I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this resonated with you. And I really hope that this was interesting, insightful. Um, 
leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to and you're not already. I always like hearing from you guys and I always like hearing, you know, if the reading resonated and in what ways. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope that I see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, and finally, we have group number three, those of you who chose the Lightseer's Tarot. Let's find out what you guys are manifesting right now. What are you attracting into your life? Okay, so we have the Wheel of Fortune coming out right away. What is group three manifesting? The moon, the three of pentacles, Ooh. the empress, <clears throat> we have the sun. Two of Wands, Three of Swords, Knight of Swords, and the King of Cups. And then on the bottom of the deck here, we have the Ten of Swords. Okay. So, give me a minute here, guys, to look over these cards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through them all one by one and just kind of talk a little bit about, like, what what the cards mean, um, like the general energies of the cards, that sort of thing. So first of all, we have the wheel. The wheel is all about cycles. It's about change, endings, and new beginnings. Um, this card definitely has connections to like divine timing, divine guidance. A lot of times when we see the wheel, it is a message that you know, divine guidance is at play in a situation in some way or another. Um, the moon, this is really about like the subconscious and intuition, um, the unknown, okay? This card can definitely represent like illusions, confusion, uncertainty, um, and it shows up a lot in situations where somebody might just be kind of feeling like they're lost in the dark, like they don't really know how to move forward in a situation or uh, particularly it can indicate like emotional confusion, feeling really unsure about how you feel about something or just emotionally feeling very lost. Um, the Three of Pentacles, this card is about cooperation and teamwork. It talks to me a lot about like building something up, working to establish yourself in some way. The Empress card is about manifestation and creativity. This card also speaks to me of unconditional love and empowerment and self-confidence. You know, the Empress is a very powerful, very capable kind of figure. Um, the Sun, extremely positive card. This is wish fulfillment. This is joy and happiness and you know self-love love for others um it's also a card of like illumination and understanding uh gaining clarity on something the two of wands this is really about like planning for the future uh planning ahead um it can be about exploration, it can be about potential for change, potential for action. Um, <clears throat> there is a real sense of like opportunity and, and possibilities with this card. The Three of Swords here is kind of interesting. This is about grief and heartache and loss. It's, it's really a sense of sadness that we get with the Three of Swords and pain, emotional turmoil. The Knight of Swords is definitely an action-oriented card. It talks to me a lot about forward movement, um, but it also speaks of like communication, messages coming through, openness, honesty, insight. The King of Cups, again, this card really speaks to me of self-love and it can also represent very strong emotional bonds between people. Um, I get a real sense of like kindness and compassion and empathy with the King of Cups and then over here on the bottom of the deck, the Ten of Swords is similar in a lot of ways to the Three of Swords. 
again, this is a card of grief and loss and um, some kind of painful, difficult ending usually is what we see with the Ten of Swords um, or a really difficult release of some kind. In some instances, this card can signify like healing from pain, healing from some kind of loss, over overcoming um, or accepting something difficult that has happened to you, uh, particularly in, in this specific deck, you know, just looking at the imagery on the card. But um, with all of that said, I'm getting something about, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to explain what I'm seeing here. I'm, I'm seeing you group three. I'm seeing you guys like having to fight and, and stand up for yourselves in some way. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that a lot of you have been, I want to say, I don't want to say put down exactly, but I feel like, you know, many of you who chose this group have experienced a lot of obstacles or a lot of setbacks in your lives. I think for many of you, some of these obstacles have come from like people you were close to, like family, friends, partners. This is interesting because the the vibe that I, that I get with these cards, it's a little bit similar to what I was seeing with group one, but there's also some similarities with group two. It's sort of like a, almost like a mixture of both of those like readings coming together here. Um, but there's also something kind of different about this. It's like, okay, oh, 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 okay, okay. This is making a little bit more sense now. Um, like I was just saying, I feel as though a lot of you guys have really struggled in your lives in the past somehow with like standing up for yourselves in some way or like pursuing, you know, what you want for yourselves, um, like your personal goals, that sort of thing. I just feel like a lot of people have held you back or, or certain situations have held you back. Um, and I feel like you've maybe struggled a lot with trying to find alternatives, like alternative pathways to getting what you want, like ways of getting around some of these setbacks that have been put before you by, I feel like by people who were supposed to support you or people who are supposed to support you. Um, because I think for many of you, you might still kind of be in a situation like that where, you know, someone around you or, or maybe multiple people around you are holding you back in some way. It just feels like there's a, been a lot of like toxicity or codependency around you um, in some of your relationships. And, you know, not to say that any of that is your fault, because I don't think it is. But um, it just feels like you've had a lot of trouble extracting yourselves from those connections, from those situations. Okay. Um, For a lot of you, I feel like this is family related. For some of you, I feel like this is more job related. Like maybe you've been stuck in a really shitty job situation, but you feel like you can't get out because you need the job. You know, you need to be able to feed yourself and and live, you know, all of that. And and you, you feel like, you know, you don't really have any other option. You know, those are a couple of specific like examples that I'm getting but like whatever the case you know however this resonates with you I just feel that you guys have been feeling very lost and very trapped in your situations um feeling kind of like 
you know, there's just, there's no way out of this. I don't know how to escape from this energy from this from from these constant setbacks you know it kind of feels like you've just been just caught in a loop you know a repetitive cycle where the same thing just keeps happening you feel like you just keep going around and around in circles nothing ever changes nothing ever really gets better permanently um but what i'm seeing as far as like what you guys are manifesting essentially the, the main thing that you're manifesting from what I can see here is you're manifesting a way out. Okay, you're manifesting a way to overcome whatever it is that has been holding you back. You're manifesting clarity, you're manifesting a path forward out of the darkness. Okay. You're manifesting a new phase in your life and the, the start of a new cycle. And that's a big deal. I feel like within this new cycle that's about to start for you guys, you are, you, you, I, I see you guys really having the opportunity to really open up and truly be yourselves and finally like, pursue things that you really want to do and, and pursue things that you actually really care about okay does this make sense um so whether it's like you know hobbies or career related stuff you know whatever i just see you guys finally having this opportunity that you've never really had before to go out and just do what you want to do and spend your life the way that you want to spend it to live your life the way that you want to live it Because you guys, group three, I, first of all, I feel like a lot of you, not all of you by any means, but I feel like a lot of you are probably still fairly young. Um, you, it, it seems like you still have a lot of attachments to maybe childhood traumas or, you know, toxic family connections, something like that. But I see you extracting yourselves from those situations and from those connections. Freeing yourselves. Freeing yourselves so that you can heal and, and you can be who you were really meant to be and who you really want to be, okay? Because I feel for some of you, like, you you haven't really been able to, you know, pursue your passions or do things that you really care about. Or, or, or maybe even, like, you haven't felt safe enough to, you know, come out and, and, like, love who you really love. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, this could even have to do with, like, your, your identity in some way. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like you're manifesting that opportunity to be who you truly are and be who you were meant to be in this lifetime. You are manifesting a space where you can do that. You're manifesting safety. You're manifesting stability. The things that you need to be able to do that. Is this making sense? Group three, I feel like I should tell you guys that I'm very, very proud of how far you've come already. And I'm very proud of your resilience, okay? Because they're telling me that you guys have been very resilient. Like, you've been through a lot, most of you. And you've had some really difficult experiences. And you've faced a lot of suppression. And a lot of, I mean, I feel like some of you have maybe even experienced a lot of, like, hatred directed towards you. But you're still here and you're still pushing forward and things are going to get better because you are manifesting that. You are manifesting improvement. You are manifesting a big change, a positive change. <sighs> Freedom from the things that are preventing you from being who you're meant to be 
and the things that are holding you back from, you know, achieving your full potential. So um, group number three, I wanted to keep this kind of short and that's, that's, that's really what I'm getting for you guys. Um, I hope that this resonated with you. I hope that this was interesting and insightful perhaps. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You can check out my links down below if you're interested. Leave me a like, comment if you want, subscribe if you're not already and you would like to. I really like hearing from you guys and hearing, you know, if the reading reson resonated and in what ways. Um, and group three, I'm really wishing you all the best and I hope that I see you next time. Bye.